good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started. My name is John Eckert. I am the Director of Parks and Recreation. I wanted to say thank you to everyone for braving the elements to come out here today to help commemorate this really uh, special moment in our Parks Department and for Riverfront Park. Uh, I'm going to make my comments brief, but I wanted to uh, quickly just uh, notice our City Manager, Bruce Moore. Thank you for coming out. Assistant City Manager, James Jones. Thank you for coming out. Uh, Jane Rogers. Dean Compuris, City Director Dean, Cur Dean Compuris, thank you for being such an integral parts of the development of Riverfront Park and for this uh, special park we have here today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just say one quick comment. This is such a special uh, project for me as a Parks Director. It really brings together the notion of public-private. This could not have happened without members of the community just being so generous and buying into the vision and making it happen. So thank you so much. I want to give you a quick round of applause from us. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dean Capuris to uh, explain a little bit about the park. Thank you. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming. It, as I told Wendy on the phone, this is nothing but liquid sunshine, so thank you for coming. Um, this is a, as John said, a great tribute to John. It's a great tribute to Leland, where are you? who designed this, but it's most importantly what John said, it is a true public-private partnership. And the it was started by Wayne Woods and um, John Burkhalter, who helped pay for the children's fountain down there. And Margaret, who helped do the first original playground but it really wasn't enough. It wasn't what we wanted. We talked about children having a great experience, an age-appropriate place for children, and a fun place for children to explore and do things, not only on man-made pieces of thing, but natural things where you have turf and you have rocks and you have adventure and you have ability to do different things. And that's what this park represents. So I could go on for a long period of time about why it's important, but I won't because we'll get wet. And I wanted to ask each one of the three participants to say a word about what we've done and we'll unveil what they've been a partner in doing. So Wendy, you want to come first? This is this is fun and, and it's so funny to be down here and think of all the times Riverfest was down in this park and that was the button, that was our area and this, this was the kids area right down here. Um, in 1978 when the Junior League started the Summer Arts Festival in Murray Park, it was down on the river and it was so successful that the next year they moved it downtown. And it was over on Markham and I can remember my children being on the kids stage right in front of Robinson Auditorium. And as it continued to grow, um, you know, you had hundreds and hundreds of kids that would be down here every year on that kids stage down there. Families would come, you'd bring your kids home late in the afternoon and then we'd all come back down at night to watch more music with our friends and have, have a little bit more fun. But there wasn't a whole lot going on downtown at that time. And we used to like to say that Riverfest was downtown before downtown was cool. I love that. And over the years as Riverfest grew and became its own nonprofit, it was held down here annually of Memorial Weekend, and it was a tradition that lots of families just continued until it decided to stop after 40 successful years. It saw this park in downtown as a real jewel for Little Rock. And as they began to make a little bit of money, they wanted to reinvest it back into the park. So over the last 40 years, they've donated over a million dollars back into the redevelopment of downtown and this park. Um, <clears throat> But the best part of Riverfest to me isn't just the investment it made back in it. It's something that a lot of people really didn't even notice. It was the volunteers that put on Riverfest. They came back year after year after year, giving up vacation time, giving up time with their family to be down here to make Riverfest happen. So what I like to think of is that these sculptures will be a playful reminder to the city of Little Rock, not only for what Riverfest has donated back to the park, but to the volunteers and the work that they did to make it possible. So, ooh, hey, George and Henry, you want to come help me with something?
Fine. Thank you, young ladies. I, I mentioned Wayne Woods and John Burkhalter, who helped start all this, and they've just come in. So thank you again for your help. When we started planning this, I went to my friends Isabel and Johnette Anthony and said, "We need a signature piece for the park." that really allows kids to have something playful to see and sit on and play with. And we talked to an artist by the name of Tim Cherry, who has never done an animal that was not a North American animal. And Isabel said, I want something special for kids to see and be and play with and be close to. And that's what they've done. So, Isabel, if you want to come say a few words, and then you and your family unveil this. But those of us who are hippopotamus um, fans um, know that the hippopotamus female is the most ferocious in the African jungle, and that she protects her young, especially around the water hole. Um, she basically has no predators. So we thought the hippopotamus would be very fitting for the children's garden in honor of our grandchild, Erin. And we're excited to see it. We haven't seen it yet, though we've approved sketches and um, maquettes, and um, we think this will be something that will inspire the children to study uh, African animals, or African, African animals, Africans of the, excuse me, uh, animals of the world. And um, we'd like our daughter Erin and Isabel to help with the unveiling. <laughs> Hopefully what will happen to this piece of sculpture is what's happened to the rabbit across the street from the Museum of Discovery. You see this great patina right now on it and within six months young people like Isabel will be on it, taking their pictures on it, rubbing the ears, rubbing other parts of the anatomy and pretty soon you'll see the patina go the way and that's what we want to happen. It's meant because of Isabel's creativity and desire for what it wants for children to love and touch and be close to and it's going to be a great piece and every child that walks in here will be able to see it. The, the last person that I need to acknowledge is my friend Margaret Clark. Margaret is one of those people that if you say we've got something that will really help this community and it's a great thing, never says no. She never thinks an idea is too crazy like this and she always wants to be part of something new and innovative and she always wants to make our city better. 
and this park is a tribute to Margaret and her generosity and her vision and her faith in Little Rock. So Margaret. He didn't tell me I was going to say anything. But I'll make this short. I'm very humbled and honored to be a part of this project, to be a friend of Dean's and a friend of the city of Little Rock. And it's only going to get better from here. So keep up the good work. You get to cut the ribbon. <laughs> Yes, but you can keep it.